What is up doggies, it's your boy Beanie Kowloon back at it on the YouTube. In today's video we're going to be breaking down and explaining the complete JPEG Mafia iceberg. That's right, we're making another iceberg video for two main reasons. The first biggest reason is iceberg videos tend to get a lot of views and I personally enjoy getting a lot of views. The second reason being JPEG Mafia dropped the album of 2021 last year and it's just kind of disrespectful there's not already an iceberg video on JPEG Mafia getting broken down and explained. So shit man, I thought I'd change that. But before I get into this video, I gotta give a huge shout out to the creator of this JPEG Mafia iceberg, Reddit user Saska underscore Pugar. And also an even huger shout out to Reddit user Jay-Z's adopted son who in the comments of this iceberg basically explained what every single tier was, and he was also very open to answering any questions I had about this JPEG Mafia iceberg when I private messaged him, going as far as helping me find specific moments of JPEG Mafia interviews where he's talking about certain things on this iceberg. Without his help, I would have had to scrub through like hundreds of hours of just random JPEG Mafia interviews, so the hugest shout out to Reddit users Jay-Z's adopted son. That dude's a fucking real one. But yeah, without further ado, let's just get right into this JPEG Mafia iceberg. You think you know me. If you listen to any JPEG Mafia, you should recognize this sample. You think you know me. But what you may not know is this came from WWE wrestler Edge's theme song titled Metalingus. You think you know me. This was one of Edge's many theme songs as it was actually his seventh different theme song. This wacky looking symbol. This wacky looking symbol is actually a tattoo that is on JPEG Mafia's chest. Pretty dope tattoo in my opinion, and if you're wondering what the meaning behind the tattoo is, I mean, just look at it. If I had to guess, it's to show that the dude enjoys some music. Damn Peggy. This is another one of JPEG Mafia's more popular tags that you probably know. Damn, Damn Peggy. From what I found where this tag came from was JPEG Mafia was just having his friend record a bunch of different random shit to use his taglines, and one of the things he recorded was the Damn Peggy, and it, it just stuck. Cursor. JPEG Mafia will often put a mouse cursor on his album art, on his merch, on his websites, and there's even a tattoo of a mouse cursor on his fucking face. Now as for why, I'm not too sure, but it is a fun thing to look for, you know. A little like easter egg you can find on all his different albums or his merch, and it's always a cool thing to notice. Veteran ID. This was the original album cover Peggy used when he dropped Veteran on Bandcamp. Now, I'm not sure why he changed it, as I honestly prefer this album cover, but the final album cover is also pretty dope, so I mean, I'm not really mad about the change, they're both pretty cool album covers. Fantano Ratings. Now I'll be honest, I'm not quite sure why this deserves a spot on this iceberg, because I mean Fantano reviews nearly all musicians albums, after all he is the busiest music nerd. But if I had to guess, it's because Fantano enjoys him some JPEG Mafia and has only given him really high scores. He gave both Veteran and All My Heroes Are Cornballs an 8, and he gave his most recent album LP a 9. And if you don't know Fantano, these are really good scores as he's really harsh with the scores that he gives out. He considers anything over like a 6 like a great album, so having no album under an 8 on the Fantano score is no easy task. HT Bar. This was a video series that JPEG Mafia released where he would show the music he was working on before the release of his EP and LP projects. He would have a different artist on in each episode like Danny Brown or Kenny Beats or even Ariel Pink which I find a bit interesting considering Ariel Pink is a notorious like Trump supporter right wing guy and you know JPEG Mafia he's, he's not very right wing. So it's cool to see they can put their differences aside, you know, for the love of music. And well, I'll be straight up guys, I, I didn't really watch any of these as it's like two hours plus of content and I just couldn't be bothered. But I mean, it's all on YouTube if you guys want to check it out. Drunk Tweets. Anyone who follows JPEG Mafia on Twitter is aware of this one because JPEG Mafia will quite often get very drunk and just start tweeting out some wild shit. Here's some of my personal favorites that I could find. On Thanksgiving, the Baltimore police tweeted out, Baltimore, thank you for your amazing support this year. May you and yours have a wonderful and safe Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. And JPEG Mafia replied to this with a simple, at Baltimore police, kill yourself. Another great tweet is, at the real Donald Trump, I can't wait until you die. Swear to God, it's making me horny just thinking about it. And also, you can't forget, fellas in big ass king size beds telling fellas to lighten up. Shut your comfy ass up, fuck fella. And finally, a simple just, I'm drunk and sad as hell. Some powerful words from Mr. JPEG Mafia. Death Bomb Arc. This was the label that Peggy was dropping his albums on up until December of 2018. Then he would join Republic Records. 
I can't really find any reasoning on why he left, but considering there's no information I can really find of him talking about this shit, I'd assume that there's no real bad blood between Peggy and Death Bomb Ark, and I'm sure this was just a business decision. Morissetti hate. Morissetti is most known for his music that he did with the Smiths, and he has a very controversial status in the depressed indie music community. As most people would agree that the music he made with the Smiths was fucking banging, you know, some serious bops. I would go out tonight, but I haven't got a stitch to but the dude Morissetti himself is just like low-key racist and just a really insensitive dude and is just widely hated by most of the people in his music community of sad indie music enjoyers because sad music indie enjoyers are mostly left-wing and very sensitive dudes. And JPEG Mafia is not a fan of Morissetti as a person and I mean this is made kinda obvious by his song called I Can't Fucking Wait Until Morissetti Dies. Dark Skin Mansion. This was an EP Peggy originally dropped on Bandcamp in May of 2015. This album was later deleted by Peggy, and I can't really find anything from Peggy on why he deleted it, but if I had to guess, it's just because he didn't think it was up to snuff with his other works. While this album has been deleted, it's still really easy to find with a quick Google search, so I decided to give this EP a listen and give y'all a quick little bean review of it. This album has a bit of an odd future vibe to it, but the instrumentals are much more complex with layers on layers of these loud distorting noises, with moments of some really beautiful, spacey, interdimensional sounds of that makes any sense. And on top of these instrumentals, you have JPEG's Mafia's extremely passionate and angry lyrics about, you know, racism and basically just not fucking with the police. Combining these two things together makes for a pretty solid hype album that will be sure to, you know, you know, get you hyped up, get you to rage, man. But I mean, this album, in my opinion, is just less developed and fleshed out than his later works and while I basically enjoy every song off this album, some of the songs I find a bit boring and repetitive and in my opinion, I'm feeling a strong six on this album military. JPEG Mafia being a poor black kid from Alabama wasn't left with a lot of options getting out of high school. And during this time in high school, he had an army recruit come to his school and just talk about all the benefits you can get from joining the military, you know, stuff like health care, a free place to stay, free food, and also just a way to get some money. So because of these reasons, Peggy would end up joining the US Air Force for one term getting deployed to places like Iraq, Kuwait, Afghanistan, North Africa, and Japan. And as I'm sure most of you guys already know, Peggy did not enjoy his time in the military. He did not join up to fight for his country. He did it because he felt he had no other option. I joined the military for like various reasons. It can be like a bunch of reasons. A lot of people are in there because they don't really have any other options really. And you know, the military they used to do a thing where they go to schools and they'd like go yeah. to like really poor schools and be like y'all should join the military because what else are you gonna do and that's yeah. basically what happened to me so. in an interview done by the guardian peggy describes his time overseas as extremely scary and the military as a club of dick swinging jocks he describes himself as a reluctant black soldier caught between the service arm of white american nationalism and its hatred of the middle east he describes serving abroad as being swept up at in some shit you didn't start the military was isolating. When they write their rules, they don't think about black people, so it's not meant for black people. So yeah, Peggy was not the biggest fan of being a part of the US Air Force. During his free time in the Air Force, Peggy would actually work on and release some different music, but I mean, he was very unknown at this time and went by a different name. Devin Hendrix. This was JPEG Mafia's original rapper name, and he would drop three different projects under this name onto Bandcamp. And as I was talking about before, some of this work was actually done while he was still in the military overseas in Japan. All My Heroes Are Cornballs Director's Cut There's a Director's Cut version of All My Heroes Are Cornballs that Peggy sold on a USB drive alongside the release of this album. This version of the album gets rid of track 4 JPEG Mafia type beat and has an alternative longer version for the song BBW and adds new songs like A Beauty, Quicksand, Pre-Verified Lifestyle, In The Pit, and Untitled Country Song. While originally you could only get this album by buying the USB drive, you can now find this full album for free fairly easily because, you know, the internet. So check the link in the description if you want to listen to this full thing, or if you want to check out any of the other things that I mentioned in this iceberg. Joe Chili World Joe Chili World was the YouTube channel that Peggy would drop his music on when he was still under the name Devin Hendrix. This channel has, I guess, what you could call music videos for his songs at that time, but, I mean, the music videos are just... Mostly nonsense, but I mean, JPEG Mafia still tends to release some nonsense music videos or movie director's cuts for his albums, so I mean, check it out if you want. 
Granola Records. This was one of the recording labels that Peggy used to work under. He would end up dropping Rockwood EP, Ghost Pop, his Communist Slow Jams, and Dark Skin Manson while he was still working under the Granola Records label. Heart Emoji. This is one of Peggy's albums that he released when he was still known as Devin Hendrix. He would end up changing and re-releasing this album as Gen Y to the fifth power, and then changing it and re-releasing it once more under the title Ghost Pop. None of these albums can be found on places like Apple Music or Spotify, they're all only uploaded to Bandcamp, so you gotta go over there to check them out. BBC Outtakes. This refers to the songs Jerry, Flex the Connect, and LL Cool J that were originally supposed to be on the album Black Ben Carson, but were taken off for some reason or another. As you've probably noticed from this iceberg, Peggy will often cut out songs from his albums last minute or sometimes even after the album's already out. CSJ 29 Tracks CSJ, also known as Communist Slow Jams, was originally 29 tracks long, and then later shortened to 27 tracks, and then finally shortened to only 25 tracks. No version of this album was ever released to any mainstream music sites like Apple Music or Spotify, and you can still find the full 29 track version on YouTube, link in the description. Veteran TP Cassette As it sounds, there was a veteran cassette tape that Peggy sold alongside with the release of this album. It's a cool collector's item with an alternative cover, but other than that, it's just his veteran album on a cassette tape. There's no new songs or alternative tracks or anything like that. Alright, we're diving into the lower depths now, doggies. M.M. Bop M.M. Bop, a song created by the Hansons, was, according to Peggy, one of his first musical inspirations. On an interview done with Brick the Mag, which Brick the Mag is like a magazine company that releases biannual 260 page magazines talking about the current landscape of hip hop and also pays respect to hip hop pioneers, legends, and up and comers. In the interview they did with Peggy, Peggy states that his earliest memories of falling in love with a particular track are surprising to say the least. The first tape I owned was that M.M. MM Bob shit by Hanson. He says I was like, yo, I don't know if y'all heard this shit called M.M. MM Bob but it's fucking raw. And as someone who went to go listen to M.M. Bob by Hanson after I read this, I can confirm that it is pretty fucking raw. Yeah, Kyle Dankler. All right, so Kyle Dankler was a real police officer who pulled over a Vietnam War veteran by the name of Andrew Howard Brennan. This initial traffic stop was just because Andrew Brennan was speeding, but Andrew Brennan suffered from PTSD, and because of this, this conversation quickly escalated. Within like the first minute, Andrew already got out of his car, started dancing very erratically, and started saying shit like, fuck you, goddammit, here I am, shoot my fucking ass. Dude was going a little cuckoo bananas. At one point, he even starts charging at the officers, continued to scream stuff like, fuck you, and who you calling motherfucker? And I mean, obviously, this whole time, the police aren't calling him a motherfucker or saying fuck you. This guy is just absolutely tweaking out. This would only go on for around a minute until Andrew fled back to his car and ended up pulling out an M1 carbine, which led to a shootout between him and the officer, where he unfortunately took the officer's life. Andrew would plead not guilty by reason of insanity, but was found guilty and sentenced to death. This was a national news story and is still talked about often today on like YouTube and other places. The reason being, this whole thing was caught on police body cam footage making it easy to witness this horrendous tragedy. And while Peggy decides to clip the audio from this to open up his song, I just killed a cop and now I'm horny. And in this song, Peggy just proceeds to rap about, you know, killing cops, not fucking with cops, shit like that. I mean, what else would you really expect? So yeah, some pretty edgy stuff, but I mean, dude Peggy just doesn't fuck with cops. Like, I mean, I don't know what else really to say on that matter. Julie Watts. Julie Watts was someone who re-uploaded an old Devin Hendrix tracks titled Coffee with Charles Manson, and I mean, the song fucking bangs. Muscle car dreams, but I'm on bike living, not a drinker. Try to drink three, but gotta work on the pivot. He would also upload this song onto places like the JPEG Mafia subreddit. Dude was just being a real one, re-uploading this old Devin Hendrix track that we would have never been able to listen to if not for him. Devin Hendrix Reviews This refers to the reviews that you can find of people talking about Peggy's work while he was still under the name Devin Hendrix. An interesting thing about these reviews is oftentimes the people would say that Peggy himself actually messaged them requesting that they review his work. Don't know much about Devon Hendrix, um, he actually sent me a message. Um, and asked to review his, um, I believe it's a mixtape, review his mixtape. It's interesting to look at the grind that Peggy had to go through to get people to see his music at first. Dude was literally asking random people to review his work to gain more traction on his music. Everyone's got to start somewhere, man, and I mean, just look at Peggy now. He's got the biggest YouTube music reviewer sucking his dick. False Sexual Allegations 
All right, so some grimy ass fucking 4chan user, you know, thought it would be a funny troll to, you know, act like JPEG Mafia was a sexual abuser. They would end up posting to the JPEG Mafia subreddit and describing a story where this girl and her friend, who were big fans of JPEG Mafia, went to go see one of his shows and then. After this show, one of the friends decides to go backstage and meet JPEG Mafia while the other waits in the car. So this girl goes backstage and what do you know it? She meets the one and the only JPEG Mafia, although JPEG Mafia is not being nice today. Today, he's asking this girl questions like, yo, who sent you back here? You know, did Gus send you? And in this story, this girl describes herself as, you know, just being terrified and just not knowing what to say. And then out the cut, this dude JPEG Mafia goes, I'm sick of you grimy bitches and proceeds to punch this hoe right in the face. Now, obviously, this story is just not true. An hour later, this same user would end up posting, Also, cope, see the cringe rap tards, continue whilst I keck and be based in trad. By the way, ask me where Salkon is. Edit. I come from 4chan.org slash mu slash exclamation exclamation. We on this board idolize our black kings and obey them since they are superior over us cringe cabling cumskin mayo fags. We could never cope hard enough to be based as those trade African kings. Now, if you're wondering what any of that means, I, I just can't tell y'all doggies. I, I don't fucking speak 4chan incel. But I mean, what it does for sure mean is this dude just a fucking wild troll and, you know, none of that story was true at all. I mean, pretty obvious. I'd imagine everyone knows JPEG Mafia doesn't go around just calling girls grimy bitches and then punching them in the face. I mean, that would be wild. Photos from the military. So, JPEG Mafia being a part of the military, obviously, you got some photos of him. Now, most of these photos are pretty hard to find, if not impossible, but I found this one photo, so I mean, that, that counts. Pretty cool photo, am I right, doggies? Dark Skin Manson DVD. This was a DVD that Peggy released alongside the album Dark Skin Manson, and this DVD is really fucking weird. It's truly indescribable. The whole thing has a bunch of nudity and basically just straight up porn. All the shots are very scuffed up or edited to just look all kinds of funky. It will also just randomly cut to clips of like Charles Manson or some GTA 5 gameplay and just a bunch of random shit that I don't have any idea what it is. This whole thing just feels like a bad acid trip or more like you're tripping on some DXM. It's truly something I just can't describe with words, it's just something you're gonna have to check out yourself. Links in the description if you're curious. PNG and Dropbox Mafia these were friends of Peggy's when he was still over in Japan. They presumably made music together, but since this was 10 years ago over in Japan, it it's impossible to find any tracks that they made together. Or at least I couldn't find any. If you guys know where the Peggy Japan tapes are at, please drop them in the comments. I'll be sure to highlight that comment. But yeah, Peggy and his friends had a bit of a rap crew going and inspired by the ASAP rap crew, where each member would have the beginning of their name start with ASAP. Peggy did this, but instead all the members' names would end with the word Mafia. Me and my friends in, in Japan, we were like... You know how ASAP Mob had like ASAP Ty, ASAP Rocky. And instead of like ASAP, it was just Mafia. So one person was like PNG Mafia, one person was like TIFF Mafia, Dropbox Mafia, I was JPEG Mafia. All right, we're on to the bottom tier, and the bottom tier is self-admitted by the creator of this iceberg to just all be shit post. But shit, doggies, I'm gonna still try to break them down the best I can. Devin Hendrix died and JPEG Mafia is a lookalike. Now, the last we've heard of Devin Hendrix was in October of 2013 with the release of the Ghost Pop tape. Devin Hendrix has been radio silent ever since, and listening through his music, there's no signs of him ever, you know, wanting to quit his music career, you know, give up on his music, but what there were signs of, of him wanting to kill himself. A lot of signs of him wanting to kill himself. The dude hasn't made any new music for eight years, I mean, odds are the dude fucking killed himself. And this random dude, this JPEG Mafia, decided, you know what, I kind of look just like this Devin Hendricks guy. And, and, you know, dude already had some fans going for him. So, you know, JPEG Mafia saw this opportunity to act as if he was this Devin Hendricks man, steal all his fans, and just continue to make music under the new name JPEG Mafia. And maybe, just maybe, Devin Hendricks didn't even kill himself at all. Maybe JPEG Mafia noticed he looked like this man, enjoyed his music. And maybe JPEG Mafia murdered Devin Hendricks. I don't know, man. You gotta look into it. These are just my initial thoughts, but there's something shady going on with the whole Devin Hendricks situation. Uncensored ID photo. Now, legend says when Peggy originally dropped Veteran with the Veteran ID photo, Peggy originally left everything uncensored and, you know, just completely doxed himself. And after a couple fans, you know, end up coming to his house because dude just gave out all his information, Peggy realized, oh, you gotta, you gotta blur some of this shit, don't you? I can't, I can't just show him all my information. Every copy of Veteran is personalized. 
This is a play on the every copy of Mario 64 is personalized from one of the Mario 64 icebergs that would later end up getting like hour long videos just breaking down this one topic. And I mean it's obviously not true every Mario 64 copy isn't personalized but there is they do find a way to make an hour long video out of it and it's a pretty far video I'd recommend it. But yeah, believe it or not, every copy of Veteran is also personalized to your own personal likes. Nah, shit sounds a little crazy and I don't have any evidence, I'm certainly not making an hour long video breaking down why this is true, but you just gotta take my word for it, dog. Shit's personalized. Peggy is actually a Trump supporter. Now, I know this sounds wild, but let's just look at the facts. Peggy is from Alabama, which is a very right-wing state. In 2020, 62% of the people voted for Donald Trump. Now, if we're going to go by stats alone, I mean, odds are Peggy would also vote for Trump if 60% of the people from Alabama are Trump fans. Now, I, I bet you're thinking, okay, but then how come everything that Peggy preaches in his music and then online is just the complete opposite? But come on, doggies, don't be so close-minded. Peggy is clearly controlled opposition, controlled by the right, perhaps controlled by Donald Trump himself. The reason Peggy raps all this anti-right-wing stuff and not fucking with the police, and you know, going as far as clipping an audio of a police officer actually dying for one of his songs, it's pretty clearly just to give the left a bad look. People in the middle, you know, they look over and they see, you know, JPEG Mafia and they go, damn, this is what the left's about? They're about, you know, killing police officers and all this wild-ass shit? And because of this, they're most likely gonna side with the people on the right because, you know, the average person is not really getting down with killing police officers. But little do these people know, this is exactly what Peggy wants. I've actually heard from reliable sources that Peggy and Donald Trump are best friends. Alright, well, that's the complete JPEG Mafia iceberg. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, you know the drill, doggies. Drop a like, drop a comment, hit the subscribe button, all that good stuff. I will say, though, if you're subscribing just to see more iceberg videos, probably just don't subscribe, because honestly, I'm not going to make too many more iceberg videos. I will make iceberg videos whenever I see a topic that I find very interesting, but the whole iceberg thing, it's just overdone to death. And, you know, I'm trying to do some other shit on this channel. So, I mean, if you're interested in hearing more from me, you know, stuff about like music, movies, TV shows, tier list, fucking some crazy ass life stories that I got and just shit that's going on in the world today. I don't know, doggies. I got a lot of ideas. And I mean, if you're curious about any of them, you know, hit that subscribe button. I can guarantee more heat content incoming. And as always, peace out, doggies. Let's get lost tonight. You could be my black Kate Moss tonight. Play secretary on the boss tonight. And you don't give a fuck what they all say, right? Awesome, the Christian and Christian Dior. Damn, they don't make them like this anymore.